we are Steve and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show, we answer that and more. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, and this is the Land Academy Show. This is episode number 2011, and today, Jill and I are talking about the truth about working with your spouse in the land business. In case you don't know, it's not all peaches and cream. Oh, there it's may be something. It's not all just I, like this show. I got to write one more thing down. Excuse me, I have another note now. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> On a personal note, I love this topic. I think it's going to be a blast. I think there's probably a lot of stuff that Jill's got to say. You know, no, there's a few things I need to say. <laughs> and in the, <laughs> in the, in the safety of this yeah, environment, right. with you on the other end, we can't get in trouble. That's exactly right. We, well, only we can only get in a certain amount of trouble. True. Can't get in any nasty. Major trouble. Because when the camera's off, so are the gloves. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's hockey season, by the way. Taking those yes, gloves off. Yes. Yes. All right. Hey, before we get started, I have a big announcement. For the first time ever, we've never done anything like this. We are going to do a live, open to the public workshop the week of June 17th. I'm looking for the exact dates here. So yeah, June 17th through the 21st. And it's not like the same thing is going to be repeated. It's going to be building on each other every day. So we're going to start with equity planner and, and, and goal setting and all that stuff. It's, it's kind of, you know, everything we do in Land Academy, but I wanted to really take a step back and have an open workshop for anyone. So if you're really thinking about doing this, you do not want to miss it. So watch your email. If you don't, if you're not in my email loop, you should be download our free ebook that'll get you in there or just send a note to my team like hey what's going on june 17th i need to be involved to support at landacademy.com so what's going to happen it's going to be one hour a day monday through friday day that week sometimes with jack and sometimes just me and it's going to be 9 a.m pacific time so 12 p.m easter time and again just for an hour each day and it's really you going to will give learn you, tons oh my gosh a really good insight to what's going yeah. on more than just reading the ebook and getting yep. on the thursday call how to buy and sell land totally we're going to really do some you know as, as much as a deep dive as we can in an hour yeah but you're going to walk away knowing whether this is a good fit for you or not i guarantee it I've been doing this for 30 years. Yeah. We've done more than 16,000 deals. Jill's been doing it for more than 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just know, you know, we know what we're talking about. Yeah. And and we're not at this age afraid to share the actual real story. True. Not the fluff. Right. You know, and not, have... ju not, just, not just what's possible, but here's what, you know, here's how to do it. We have nine years of Land Academy. We got people that have been with us nine years. Yeah. So we have a lot to share. Each week on the show, we answer a question from our Land Academy member uh, Discord forum, and we take a deep dive into land-related topics by popular request from our Land Academy community. I read a couple of reviews of our show recently, and one reviewer said, uh, it just made me loud, loud crack up. Yeah, you know, this show is fine. Uh, the highlights are actually just the questions. So if you can just listen to the question and not really listen to what all, uh, the other stuff that they oh, say. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> so. <laughs> just tune in for the first five, ten minutes, and then you're done. By the way, it was I the most it. meaningful comment. I, you know, there's all kinds of comments about everything on the Internet, but that was like, that, you know, I just want to hear the questions. So okay. We're, doing two, we're going to do two questions uh, today. All right. So I'm going to read one, and you're going to answer, and then there's a second one that's we're going to flip-flop. So, all right, here's our first question. Craig wrote, good morning. For infill lots, when we're doing the red, yellow, green test for houses, are we only looking at new construction or all houses? Also, should we use the yellow, yet, yeah, red, yellow, green test uh, for lots once we determine our favorable, favorable zip codes from houses? How much do both lots and houses be are they a test for reason or is it doing too much work would doing i'm sorry would doing both lots and houses be a test or reason or is that just too much work so i'm going to simplify greg's question because i'm pretty sure i know what he's asking cool. do you test lots or you test houses or do you test both and this is what you do you test for everything that is reported and make sure it's apples to apples so you have, you have a zip code you test uh, just like we teach in the program. There's three or four, or it could be as many as eight statistics that you judge 
a zip code on whether or not it's viable for you to send out data, uh, send out mail. You're using data to make a decision about sending out offers. He's asking, what do you include in that data? And the answer is, you include in that data, apples to apples, for every single zip code, the stuff that's provided by the data source. So now, it doesn't really matter if it's just land, if houses are thrown in there, as long as each of the zip codes are apples to apples comparison, you're gonna know whether or not there's enough activity, the right kind of activity in that zip code to warrant you sending mail. And that's the answer. For houses, it's the same. For land, it's the same. You know, a lot of people don't know that we have a program called House Academy. And I go over this in great detail uh, in the House Academy program. In fact, if you go to houseacademy.com, check it all out. It's, it's very pertinent to what's happening now uh, from a demographic standpoint, or from a, uh, you know, uh, geez, from a, uh, <laughs> Help me here. I'll let you flounder. <laughs> it's kind of funny. No, I'm just joking. You know what's funny about that? Uh, I just talked, I recorded earlier today a podcast that's going to air in a couple weeks um, with longtime eight year member. Her name is Bay. Bay Zhang. And she's like, oh, we are still happily doing houses yeah. too. She's like, we just closed on one on Monday. Yep. I said, what are you going to Are you going to keep it or rent it? She goes, I think I might keep this one or, or, like, or keep it or flip it. It's all done the Land Academy way, which is we don't remodel, just buy it right. I said, you going to keep yeah. it or are you going to sell it? She's like, I think we're going to keep this one. I'm like, good for you. She's like, I'm, you know, p putting more things in more buckets. We're doing a house mailer right now too. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, in these current economic times, it's very valuable to, to uh, start to consider buying and selling houses. Our mm -hmm. many members already, most of the members that we have have had or have for a long time, nine plus years like Bay, mm -hmm. have, are, they do both. Mm -hmm. And so do we. Exactly. Chris asks, this is uh, question number two, I've been working with a seller who wants to do a deal in a very strange manner. I think she's pretty old. We are communicating uh, via email only. At first, it seemed like she didn't want to use a title company at all. However, now she's saying that she's okay closing with the title company, but she wants an earnest money deposit to be sent to her directly rather than through the title company so she can hold the properties for me. I don't know what that means. I'm concerned that there are uh, that there's a bunch of title work necessary to close the deal as at least one of the properties was transferred on a quick claim deed. Uh, by the way, this is a package of six properties. The margins are likely decent. I am not completely sure, as three or four of the prop three or four of the properties are not mapped, and the county does not have a survey on file. So, I would have to get a survey done to determine uh, where the properties are. One of the properties should be able to sell for for like forty to forty five thousand, and the other uh, one for about between seven and ten thousand. One is an odd shaped parcel that doesn't have much use. The unmapped parcels are a toss up. I think they're worth a couple of thousand dollars each, uh, at least if they have decent attributes, maybe more, like ten to fifteen thousand dollars each. She wants thirty-two thousand. If I do real quick math in my head, it's forty-five plus ten. That's fifty-five plus uh, thirty. So buy for thirty-two, sell for seventy. Yeah. I right. know what I think. Go ahead. Well, here's my first my first thoughts on this one. Um, you know, it's what I was going. Here's an interesting side note. Based on this information and what I know about the seller and hard to find them and the survey work and stuff, I kind of think I know what state it is. I bet, I bet I know you do. That's what I wrote down right there. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, that's how scary is that? That's why you're here. Like, that's why you work holy with their moly. Boy, those land and camera people know their stuff. We, we just read this question. They know what state it is. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's how long we've been doing this <laughs> and how, how spread out we are in the country. So that's a side note. But you know what? I'm not going to play those games. You know, this the mar I got to tell you right now, this is not, if it was buy for 10 and sell for 70, now I'll, now I'll jump through hoops for her. But I'm, I'm worried that the time this is going to take and the cost and the energy, and I'm very sorry, but I personally would not wire or send somebody money for them to hold it for me. Like, that's what I think he means. Like, don't sell them. Well, if you give me $5,000 right now, son, I won't sell them to anybody Sorry. else soon, too. And I promise when you're ready to close, we'll all be here. Mm -mm, I'm a, I wouldn't do that. So that's not how I, it goes into, I do it the normal way. Cause no one's going to play those games too. 
kind of thing. She either wants to sell or she doesn't. So I, I think there's two things going on here. Um, she probably wants to sell. I do believe that. But I do think that there's some hesitation in her and trusting you. I hate to say it, and be, but that's what I suspect because I don't have these issues. Maybe there's more phone calls. Maybe there's something else. And, and I really wanted you to make sure, gosh, before you go down this path, is it worth your time? So my, I'm filming a uh, man plan right now, manplan.com, which I'll be releasing in September. That's an informal, it doesn't matter. And one of the things that I really preach about in, uh, in gaining wealth, I don't care if it's through land or houses or uh, metal stamping or convenience stores, whatever you are doing, you have to do it within, within reason, within your acquisition criteria. So I can tell you right now, this does not fit our acquisition criteria. It doesn't fit it both from, uh, and that doesn't mean it shouldn't fit yours. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fit it from A, how much money you can potentially make, which I think is really best case, maybe 40,000 bucks, or B, how much a pain in the ass it is. Mm -hmm. And so we're just past it. Jill and I have done 16,000 deals. Mm -hmm. We're just, we're past these kinds of deals. I'm not saying if you're new to this, because I actually think you are, or newer, Chris, that you shouldn't uh, consider it, but this is just a lot of time and energy. And I believe it's easier to send out more mail, pick the best ones that come back from the actual mail that you're sending out and just do the deal. And, and you know sure where you they are. your criteria, yeah. The numbers, you, there's no guessing. You have all the answers. You know what's funny? You can't even get in a, a real opinion on this because you don't know where they are. I have, that's right. I have, that's the thing. It's not like you can call like, oh, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go to a, a local expert and get their opinion. They're, they don't know where they, nobody knows where they are. So that's there. I used to entertain that. We used to entertain that only, only when I would buy like a big bundle, like say we're buying 30 or 50 properties for somebody right, right? in this state, in this situation. And there were like just a couple, two or three that we couldn't find them. Right. That I entertained because those were gravy anyway. If I could find them, great. If I couldn't, I didn't care. All the other 27 properties that I'd bought from this person, I knew where they were, paid for the whole thing. So that's that's how I rolled. Anytime Jill and I have ever done a multi-APN deal, 20, 30, 40, 50 properties, I've done them as high as, uh, geez, 1,000. We made millions of dollars on it. And there were always amazing properties in that group mm -hmm. and properties that, we just let them go back to the uh, tax authority because we, maybe we couldn't find them. Right. Maybe we don't care. Maybe it was a cemetery. Yeah. Maybe, it, you know, because. True story. When people are, when people are offloading bundles of property, there's going to be some junk in there that they're like, just get it out of here. Like clean out my garage. I want to put my car here. So my answer to this, and he goes on, uh, the question gets really long, but really he's like, what should I do? What's the worst thing that can happen? I pay the 3000 bucks and I lose it because she just goes dark. Yeah. I mean, I guess that is the worst thing that could happen or it could all go as planned and you get stuck with some property that you don't know where it is. You've got, now you've got to do surveys to find it. The, uh, my big fear with this deal is that the taxing authority of the county uh, has some crazy stuff hoops to, for you to jump through because now you own properties that weren't. Why doesn't she know where they are? I know. They weren't subdivided correctly. That's why. Somebody, and there's a quick claim deed. Did he say in this yeah, one? Somebody, yeah. somebody isolated. They were created an APN at the taxing authority of several years ago, probably created an APN for a property based on a legal description, and it's not on their books. So it's not the end of the world. It's very. You can work through this. Wouldn't it be easier to do another 30,000 unit mailer and pick four properties out of there that you're going to make a hundred grand on? I think so. Chris, don't date this seller. <laughs> I have six red flags oh my God, right now. Joe, you're right. She wants money up front. Mm -hmm. she, she's like, I don't even know where they are. Some of them were transferred funky with a quick claim deed. Mm -mm. Chris, if I were your sister, I'd say, move on, call another seller. More call fish another the, girl. There's more fish in the sea. Yep. Today's topic, the truth about working with your spouse in the land business or any business. Jill, give us the highlights of working with me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Where do I start? Well, here's, here's a beautiful uh, thought. Um, 
<laughs> I actually don't know where to start. I do. I'm like, hi, let me think about. You want real highlights? No, I'll start if you want. Okay, yeah, you please go ahead. You, you, you have a plan. Jill is amazing on the phone. Well, yeah, you're great at data. All right, okay, let me. I can jump in then too. Well, you want me to start or not? Because no, I saved it right there. You did save me. Now I want to take it back over. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. The highlights of working See with you. See that flexibility with mm. working with your spouse. There you go. In front of a camera. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> okay. Highlights of working with you. You definitely fill in the gaps that uh, on the things that I'm not good at. And part of it is luck. And no, I'm serious. No, part of it is that, like luck that we got together that I yeah. have a different talent. Oh, I have different yeah, talents sure. and you have different Pure talents. Pure luck, actually. So that's what I mean. Um, so that's really great. I don't have to explain what I'm doing every day. You understand what's going on. My team is your team. Uh, you know, you, you are now I'm ready to hand the torch back. Yeah. <laughs> I'll save you as we go here. Now okay. I know how this is going to go. Oh, great. Jill's amazing on the phone. We have very separate talents, uh, but here's the thing. Here's the thing that uh, if you want to know in less than 30 seconds whether or not you're supposed to be working with your spouse or maybe supposed to be with her at all, ask her this. What is your long-term goal? Without you telling, and this does. This is not gender specific. If you're a woman listening to this, ask your man or vice versa. What is your long-term goal? When you look out as far as you can see, based on your age or whether you have kids or not or everything that's going on, what your jobs are. What's that look like way out there? What what What's your house look like? Where do you live? How much money do you have in the bank? What are they, where are the kids going to school? And on and on and on. If they, um, and then sit quietly and listen to the answer. Don't, you know, don't steer them. If they answer the same way that you, because answer the question first before, for yourself before you answer it. If they basically have the same answer, then you you have hope that you can work together. So Jill and I have very different talents. I'm a data person and all the decisions I make are data driven. She's all social, social on the phone. Uh, she's got uh, a innate corporate sales in her, in her fiber. That's, that's what she is. That's what I did. She didn't years. make that up. I didn't make this data thing up. We both got stuck with it, I think, at birth, mm -hmm. for better or for worse. And it's not an opposites attract thing, because I think Jill and I are very similar. You know, we are very technical, both of us, when it comes to just approaching anything. True. But I did ask her that a long time ago, and she described to me almost to the almost to my vision what I wanted. In fact, she improved on my my long term uh, vision on a, in a bunch of areas. Um, not so much with accumulated equity, but how we got there and how we got there through real estate, believe it or not. You know, I was doing this 15 years before uh, she and I met. So I thought I had elect really successfully, crazy successfully. Then we joined forces and it was times 10. So ask your, ask your partner that stuff. You know, if, if this goes through and this next part, in my opinion, is not just spouse specific, but with any business partner, two people who are salespeople are not going to be good business partners. Mm -hmm. One accountant and one salesperson are probably going to do really well together. Yin and Yang is the best. Yep. So I actually have four points. Oh, good. Um, you had some time to write some stuff I down? I did. While you were talking, I tuned you out. <laughs> and I thought, of, <laughs> I thought of my own things. <laughs> Tuning your partner out no. is an incredible attribute. Actually, that is an attribute. I need to write that down. <laughs> so um, so you just covered the first one. I, I, I'm giving you credit for the first one, which is sitting down and making sure you have the same goals. Like, okay, we're going to start this land company together. Is everybody all in? Yeah. If someone's like... Hmm, I don't know. Land's kind of stupid. You're like, look, you don't need to, you shouldn't convince your spouse slash partner, you know, about this business because that's number one will sink the ship right there. So once you got the, have the goals out of the way, then the second part is you got to divide up your day to day operation, your day to day responsibility. Um, who's on the phone, who's working with, who's doing the data, who's doing the trolling. And, and, and our recommendation is more division, the better. Like there, you should not be sitting down together to troll. Could you imagine if we did no. that? Oh <laughs> or how about, how about, Hey, Hey Jack, I noticed you're running the uh, red, yellow, green test for those zip codes. Do you mind if I sit down and oh, weigh in? I'm going to tell so you, bad. I'm going to, but, and, and every time you mark something as green, I'm going to go, no, I think that's yellow. 
Can you imagine if you got off the phone with the seller and I said, you know, I don't think you handled that too well. Yeah. You could have got You're, more. I, I, in fact, I listened to your whole conversation yeah. and I made notes and I, I would, let's Here's sit down. Here's what I think you should do. It's going to take a couple hours to go over these notes to, uh, and I want to critique your performance. <laughs> that would be it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, and, and even if like, okay, we, we both help with this, like we've gone down that path. So like in the beginning, when I stepped in, you know, there were, there were times in, in Jack's career, he, he did every role, every single last one. Right. So he would just sometimes just jump in. Like, I know how to do this. I can talk to these people and he would undo some of the work that I did. So you have to divide it up, stay out of that person's lane. And, and what do you, what if I well divide it up? Does that mean rock, paper, scissors? You know, one, we don't want to stick one with all the crappy jobs. You want to, you want to first, I would say, sit down and write down all the 20 things that, that are, that are, um, part of your world, your day-to-day operations together, you know, pick and choose what a, you know, each person's good at each individual is good at, and they want to do. I mean, so like, start with that. I want to, can I finish yeah. so what they're good at? And then there's going to be some stuff at the bottom. I promise you <laughs> there's going to be three or five things that nobody wants to do, mm-hmm. but you work out some agreement like, all right. I'll take this because I know I'm better at it. If you take these two things, done. That's how you get everything done. And then you, like I said, you stay out of each person's lane. You've committed. I mean, write it down. We have had so many contracts over the years. You know, it's funny. I can't remember the last yeah. time we've had a contract. Oh, yeah, that's right. But we, it's been a couple years now. Things but, go sideways and we write a contract. I'm telling you, though, the first 15 years or the first five years, I should say, of us doing we didn't know any of this deals stuff. together, we wrote so many contracts yeah. and signed them and taped them everywhere sure. just to remind the other person, you're in my lane kind of thing. Like, oh, you're right. Got it. So, and, and that's, that's not wrong. That's okay. My third thing is, so we got the goals was one, two was, ah, oh gosh, dividing the day-to-day responsibilities. And C is now you got to support each other. What if one day's harder? What if he's really, guys, struggling on, on something? And my, you know, I pivoted all my sales. I'm not doing any sales myself. I'm just managing a bunch of brokers. So my day's easier, but boy, his part's still harder. And wow, we're, I'm seeing him. There's like, whatever area we're going into, he's having a hard time getting the data and getting enough data. And maybe there's just some extra things he's got to do. Something like that. Um, support the other person. How can I, and then I don't mean like sit down with him and go, gee, show me what you're doing. Let me help you. Mm-mm. Support him in other ways. Like what's going on and how can I help you? Well, you know what? Uh, I'm hungry. I could use a yeah. sandwich. I use it's that. As simple as that. I use that a lot. And that's, but cause it's really real. And we do that for each other all the time. You made me a salad today. Yeah. You know, honestly, yep. you did this exact thing for me today. We are here in the RV and I'm working on household things seriously around the RV while I recorded a, a podcast by myself today, you're working on a presentation for today. And at that moment you were done and I was still knee deep in a bunch of things. And you're like, how about if I make you a salad? I'm like, okay, that's great. I appreciate that. So little things like that, supporting the person, maybe it's with the kids, running errands, who knows, ask them, you know, and, or surprise them depending on the person. But that's really important. Um, my final point is, do you want to, you want to talk more about the positives and I'll leave my final one here. I'm going to take this back to the okay. original point, okay. you know, and we asked that person, what does it look like when you look way out there? Mm-hmm. Cause I've asked people this in the past where I've had relationships with them and they will say something like, what the hell are you talking about? Are you kidding me? What does our house look like? We're going to live here forever. Hmm. That's I I that's I don't want anything to change there. Uh, as far as work goes, oh, I'm just going to have this job that I have right now. I like it. I like my boss and I like the people that I work with, and I hope that it just you know. And then at the end of it, what they have said in the past is, and why are you thinking that far ahead anyway? So this only works. These things that Joe's telling you works between Jill and I because we have real estate in our soul when we got here we were we've been here for a week we're going to be here for several more weeks 
she said while we were driving here in the RV, what do you want to do when we, when we get there first? Because we're in a place where there's a lot of stuff to do. It's a like hiking mecca, hiking, biking. I'm, we have a motorcycle with us. There's you know a lot of stuff, fun stuff I want to do. And I said, well, there's these 14 pieces of property that I've been tracking on, on the internet that I would love to go look at. And she said, me too. So you have a lot of hope yeah. when, uh, and the person that Jill interviewed uh, for the podcast that she's talking about today works with her her, her husband, and mm -hmm. it's the same situation. They just have real estate in their soul, and so that's what pretty unusual. And this the current the, the odds are stacked against you that you can work with uh, your spouse. Mm -hmm. The odds are stacked against you that you're going to be with your spouse forever. <laughs> I'm not joking about this. This is tough. These are tough odds to beat. You got to have a lot of stuff going for you before anybody even opens their first mouth, the mouth in the first sentence of like, let's should we do this together? So I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just saying avoid yourself, avoid a lot of problems and really just be honest with everybody. You want to buy and sell some land? Yeah, not really. Yeah. I'd rather just be in this job. Makes I'm you just doing it for you. That's the last thing you want your spouse to ever say to you. Yeah, for the last two months, I've just been doing this for you. I'm not interested in doing this at all. Maybe you could have told me that, you know, day one. <laughs> That's funny. I can think of a handful of, uh, of Land Academy members that um, are here because they bought this for their wives. Like, yeah, that'd yeah. be something for my wife to do on the side, and now I'm doing it. Like, well, yeah, because they weren't interested. They didn't come up with it. It wasn't their idea. And they may never get interested in about it, and that's okay. As long as they're interested that you're interested, that's what counts. You know, since you started to talk about it, I have a couple things I want to censor, and we're doing the truth because we don't know how not to. That's true. <laughs> like, poor Greg's like, Greg's like, thanks. You guys kind of, is it, was it Greg or Chris? No, Chris. Chris. Poor Chris, like, thanks. You kind of chewed me up and spit me out on my idea. You know, I really um, didn't. I didn't mean to. You, no, yeah. We have no. a Land Academy member, Land Academy Pro member, who eats this these kinds of deals up. Yeah. This, she, this is her specialty. It's to take these wonky, no one's ever going to do this deal unless you do it. True. And so, yeah, she'll go talk to the person and convince her that we're going to do this and sit everybody down and. And yeah. she unravels deals and does really well financially. True. Anyway, Joel. But yeah. So the the truth about I want to talk a little bit about the truth and what could go wrong. You know, what should I be watching for? Well, number one is you're gonna drive your friends nuts. Think about this. And you gotta be really careful about this because you're gonna be out to dinner. This is all you guys have to talk about. <laughs> Your friends are going to be like, oh, gosh, do we have to go out with those two again? That Jack and Jill, all they talk about are deals. And even though it's home run deals, I'm so sick of hearing about their land business and their and their transact. If I hear one more time about how their transaction coordinator did fill in the blank, you know, so that's the thing. You uh, you each will. It's easy to slip into this weird world where this is all that you talk about and and it spills into other things and even for us like we have to I, i'll tell you right now i get in the car and we're going to dinner and we have rules about it yep. we're like it's very natural and very easy to go oh, now that i have you alone i need to run this by you and this by you and we're and so we we have very nicely said all right i'll give you this but boy when we pull into the parking lot that's it I'm like, you yeah. are right. We do that all the time, we actually, do. now that I'm thinking about That's it. That's a natural thing for us. I try not to. I try to get it done before we leave the door, but there is some time that I'm like, you know, and we very nicely will say, can I talk to you about this? Like, we've learned that you can't just launch into the other person. You can say, you know, this is really on my mind. Yeah. Can I, I'm, I'm, I'm having a struggle making a decision on this property. Here's why. I think access stinks. I know you looked at it. Can we talk about it for a minute and have a plan? Sure. But when we get, like I said, we're parking, doors open, work stops. So you have to, you have to, um, be mindful of that for yourselves and every single person around you or you will drive them bananas. Um, the second thing is it's going to get heated. Yeah. You are 100% going to not agree on something. And when you're starting out, it might be something every day, at least every week. I can pretty much guarantee once a week when you're starting a land company and you're bringing in your some family member, even if it's not your spouse, oh, it's going to get heated. You're not going to agree. And you're going to both be finding yourselves digging in and you cannot let this break you up. So what's the point to getting in an argument of any kind? I can answer that. It's to get out of the argument 
and to set up some parameters that everybody agrees to, not reluctantly, everybody willingly agrees that this is what caused this and this is what we need to do in the future to make sure that the uh, percentages are higher, that we won't have this confrontation at all. The point is not to ever have confrontation True. that's not realistic everything's going to explode at some point if that happens there's going to be confrontation uh, with yeah. any business partner that you have the point is to say all right you know what what we're arguing about is the seller wants to do this this is going to happen this has to happen and this has to happen and to, to which i i say whose responsibility is that you ha is it your responsibility or mine? And I don't care which one. And that's where the trouble starts. That's where the trouble ends. <laughs> because it's your it, that's on the, your side of the sheet. True. It's true. You have to make, here's a, some fast and simple uh, one sentence scenario, uh, things that Jill and I live by. And believe me, it did not start off this way. <laughs> I know about this because we've been working together for almost 15 years. Number one, do not work in the same space. Mm. Do not connect your desk. I don't care. Do not connect your zip code, quite That's honestly. Good. Jill and I, uh, when we're not here, work in different zip True. codes. And, we, and when we just, that what we just Meaning did yesterday, yesterday, Jill and I literally yeah. just went and got some office space, this office space sublease, and we got library cards. Mm -hmm. Amazing, brand new library where we are right now with little rooms and stuff, and, and it, you know, it doesn't cost anything. It's a beautiful piece of real estate in a beautiful building. And so, we, because we can't work together, you know. And the, uh, after no, a while, it's not after bad. a ton, it's not no, a bad that's thing. not bad. No, after a, a ton thing. of time, you forget about this stuff yeah. because at home we work, we work separately, mm -hmm. and now we're in a small small space, and she's on the phone all day, and I can't stand it. So yeah. I went and did something about it. Don't work in the same place. Do not work on the same stuff. You have to have completely and totally separate responsibilities, and the more separate, the better. Uh, I do data, she does sales, and all, anything to talk that has to do with a customer or talking of any kind she handles, we don't even talk about that anymore, and anything to do with data or accounting or finance or law, legal stuff or any of that, I handle, and she just, she blindly trusts me, mm -hmm. and the same, same here, I blindly trust her, and so, you see what I'm saying about how important this is, that first point, like, let, do you guys want to do this anyway? Yeah. What kind of house do you want to live in? There's a lot to it. You know, if, if you really wait, Jill and I wake up in the morning wanting to accomplish stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, what's funny about this. It sounds all dreamy. Here's like everybody, you know, like, oh, we want to be like you guys. And I get it. I believe that. And thank you. That's we've heard that often over the years. It does sound very dreamy when you start in this like, wow, we could work together and share this bond and share the highs and share the lows. Men, men don't think have never had a thought men have never had that thought i wasn't referring to you oh. <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to share highs and lows with you. <laughs> but but you do share the hey you you know the schedule and the flexibility you know like hey you know because come on let's let's be honest you start this and what if you know you're at some point you can leave your w-2 one of you leaves your w-2 but one of them stays at the w-2 you're still tied to a w-2 so that's going to slow you guys down so that's where it gets dreamy like oh wait a minute if we've been successfully being able to make this work with one of us working full-time on the land business and replacing their income what if both of us work full-time at the land business and replace the other income? Now we are free. So that's where I'm saying it sounds romantic and exciting, but you do need to really, you know, go into this with your eyes open and, and test it. And I do agree with, you know, there's something to be said for being land people. We both have the yeah. bug. And so we are so lucky. If one of us didn't, if you were dragging me along all the time saying, did you call these people back? I'm waiting for these answers from the county, you know, because it involves talking. What if there's something yeah. he's waiting for me? He needs to know something from the county um, about some zoning or something like that. And it's it's kind of my side of the sheet because it involves this. So, you know, and I like, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Now he's nagging me. Um, it just won't work because I don't have the bug. But in on the flip side, what I do have, which is really lucky that I can't can't wait we drive we do really seriously drive around look at property all the flipping time it is it is so weird yeah i know it's, not, it's weird it's not right it's, it's not, healthy. not it's normal. beyond a healthy uh, level of but you know looking. it's who we are i 
did the podcast today with Bay, um, and Bay and I talked about that. Like, this is my life. She loves it. Yeah. She's so happy, and that makes her so good at it. And that's because she's like, I'll, I'll, I'll handle anything. I can't remember what the what the term was. Closing the circle. She was using like, you got to start this and keep closing the circle. You got to keep keep it going, always going. You can't just start and stop. And I said, Bay, that's beautiful. You're it right. Is. You have to you, finish stuff. You have to, yeah. And she's like, and you can't let. She said, just like anything you're going to do, any business you're going to start, you know, you're going to have obstacles and struggles and there's going to be things you have to overcome and you have to do it. Period. I'm trying to get through a list of simple stuff. Sorry. Have you ever like fixing the dishwasher or something like that and your wife is standing over you and, and telling you how to do it better? Well, if you crank that, uh, you know, because you're, you're not, you're struggling with it. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't get this, I can't get the, the, the nut off the pipe. Mm-hmm. Well, if you do it this way and hold it that way, and she's standing over there for a half, over you for a half hour critiquing what you're doing, that only ends one way. Everybody's angry. True. What your wife needs to do is walk out of the room, maybe out of the house, until it's done. It might take you a half hour, might take you three hours, and then it's done. And she never knew. We, we refer to that as the transmissions out of the car. We <laughs> say that sentence to each other yeah. one, every couple of months. Yeah. This doesn't look right at all. Yeah, because the transmission's out of the car. It's not done yet. Walk away. Yep. Get and I'm out like, of there. I'm like, I'm walking away now. Not gender specific. I, and I I'm usually walk usually... away like this. Like, I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Here's another thing. I believe that all talking will eventually lead to an argument. So what do you do? You talk as little as possible. So all the deals that we, Jill and I do and all the tasks and stuff that we have to get done, and believe me, it's not a lot now because we have staff and all that, but it used to not be that way. We put an air table so we don't talk about it. I, she'll say, uh, at Jack, I need to know about this, this, and this. I know you've done 62 deals in this area. Should we be doing this deal at 32,000 bucks or whatever the numbers end up being? I get a little notification. I go in there. I look at the deal. No one's talked about anything yet. There's no verbal exchange. Oh my God, yes. We should absolutely do this deal. In fact, I think we probably could pay 50 to 60 thousand dollars and still make 120 grand on it. Please uh, purchase it within these parameters, and then we never talk again. It's the most beautiful thing ever. No talking within a professional relationship, in my opinion, is the best thing ever, unless there's some really quirky, weird stuff. You know, most of the world believes that more communication is better. More clarification is better. Absolutely not for, for what we do here. I disagree with that. Please tell me how we got to be on a podcast together based on your whole, I hate to, your We're whole We're not talking speech. to each other. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, that's We're it. We're talking to them. Oh, thank you. Okay, that's it. <laughs> like, well, that's great, babe. But, which, and you know, and the truth is, I wasn't supposed to be sitting here, but here I am. It's the truth. <laughs> People that I had lined up several years ago, almost 10 years ago, to be on the show, yeah. just kept not showing up so or they weren't good it would come downstairs i'm like we got to do it again yeah or they weren't any good or they really stunk so then eventually jill we did, went back to just once a week with jill and everybody the whole community said why isn't jill with you oh yeah then it's then it became the jack and jill show that was sweet for a long time that's really good hey my last point is just make sure you don't let this break you up this, this beautiful thing, this path that you're trying to do, going down, working together in your land business, you can't let it sink the ship. Unless you think that you're just uh, saving a bunch of time. What? Unless it's just cut to the chase long before it ever got to be to a point where you'd have to break up then 15 years later. What are you talking about? <laughs> Maybe working together with your spouse sped everything up and you found out what you were going to find out anyway 15 years later. Holy then, moly. Then... Pat yourself on the back. Nice work. Those of you watching my face right now are, are, are probably like, yeah, at my face. <laughs> like, what the heck? Hey, working with your... Uh, How about... Let's be wrap the topic up like this. Okay. It works for Jill and I. It sure. took a lot of patience, a lot of practice, and a lot of screwing up. And tears. And, and <laughs> a lot of tears. And, you know, we figured it out. Yeah. Is it for you? You're going to decide. But I'll yeah. tell you, you really need to be on the same page about where it's all going eventually and, and when to stop, when to start, when to stop, what kind of deals you want to do if you're really into it. True. Those are indicators in, uh, of a relationship anyway, not yeah. just a professional relationship. It can work. 
We have multiple examples in our group of where it works. We have more examples where it didn't work. True. Julie, you have something to share. You know, I was thinking um, about the podcast I did with Bay earlier today. And she's got such a sweetheart. You know what's so great about Bay? bay has been with us so long. Every live event, Bay's there. bay has been just you know every time we're like here's what we're pivoting to and why and here's what we're working on now Bay's like I'm on it I'm following you okay and now we're doing this doing it and she kills it everything she does and so I was I was thinking about so today was more than a podcast today it was me sitting down and getting to visit with my friend which was so nice um and and we were talking about just being an entrepreneur and then it went to that next level. I'm like, you know what, Bay? Hold on a moment. We need to take pay attention to this. Not just that we're both entrepreneurs, but being a female entrepreneur is a whole nother level. And so we really dug deep into that. Um, and I hope you listen to that. It's, I don't know when it's going to air. It's coming at, uh, sometime in the next couple of weeks. But watch for Bay Zhang. Um, Z-H-A-N-G. B-E-I is her first name. And uh, with me, and I was just, we were talking about, wow, you're right, you know, because as a, as a female, we are naturally tasked with other things, you know, making sure the family's taken care of it. You know, we, we rattled off things like, you know, there's work, there's family, there's our family's health, there's all these things. And at the, and often at the end of this, the very bottom of the list is our well being. And we both talked about how important that is. So it's just so much that goes wrapped up into being a female entrepreneur. By nature, we can't help but focus on all of those things. And I I shared with Bay how I know that I'm guilty of saying yes too much. You know, I still do that. I know I do that. I'm gonna. I'm. I've given up. You mean taking on too too much? Yeah, that's just who I am. Yeah. I have a very hard time saying no. So, um, that ship sailed. <laughs> so, so I just deal with it. It's it's clearly my happy spot. You know. <laughs> it's a good thing you can't get pregnant anymore. <laughs> right. Oh yes. <laughs> can't say no. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it was my Indian name that he gave me a while back. <laughs> anyway. Um, that's another story, but we were just talking about the complexity of, um, you know, and that she layer. She can say that because she's Cherokee. I don't I want can. all of his angry uh, emails coming to me. True, I am allowed to say that. My card's coming. So, um, anyway, it was just, it was about that. Did you want to? Did you want to ask me anything about that? I think Bay, and as I, you know, it goes without saying, you are yeah. and have been just a model investor forget about being uh, a female investor True. so i know that there's co- a layer of complexity on True. top of that but that just makes you shine more yeah i think the tougher the road the more the spoils hmm. i don't think that you know if it comes easy it's just not as valuable it's just yeah. how the book that's how it is it's everywhere in nature there's always a hunt yeah boy that's true what about you what do you want to share with us today I am formally announcing uh, through here and other places that Land Academy will be launched this fall. Mean, mean, you said I'm sorry, Land Academy, Man Plan (laughs) will be launched, manplan.com. You know, you're a man, you need a plan. I did a lot of research. Uh, I've written a lot. We're, I'm in filming and uh, writing and filming right now on it. And there, there is no group that I can find on the internet that helps men or anybody who's really interested in having a plan and being successful it's not just for men taking a step-by-step approach to accumulating a a bunch of money accumulating let's say 10 million dollars and how many real estate deals does it take what do you have to do what are the things that you have to line up in your life it's not just about sending a mailer out like land academy is there's a huge component that's behind the mindset of being wealthy and getting wealthy in it and uh that's good and having uh, you know an amazing life you only get one you know one turn around on this thing mm-hmm. and that's what it's all about i will happen actually be filming it on a motorcycle and with that our it, it's going to be very very interesting I'm, I'm, we will launch it in, in the fall and i'll if you're interested go to manplan.com it's all set up now put your uh, email address in there and you'll get notifications about how it's going and actual dates of when everything's going to get released. Awesome. I'm excited. Join us next Wednesday for another interesting episode. You're not alone in your real estate ambition. 
We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration. It's about undervalued property. We hope you find our content valuable and we appreciate your support. If you have not already, please check out our channel and hit the subscribe button. And your comments and suggestions help us uh, to create the content you're here for. Hitting the like button helps to support our channel's algorithm and gauge your interest for future shows. 